Today we will be showing you how to replace the control card on an IBM 3576 tape library. Please note the library will need to be powered off for this replacement. You will need to schedule downtime with the system administrator prior to powering the library off. To begin, please understand that under no circumstances should you move the compact flash card over from your old control card to the replacement. Doing so will void your warranty. The first thing that needs to be done is to check the licensing on your machine. The current licensing for any 3576 control unit can be checked using the web GUI of the tape library. To do this, navigate to the Manage Library header and then the Settings subheader. Within this you will find the Feature Licenses category. This will show you exactly what feature licenses are installed on your machine and what their license keys are. If you cannot access the web GUI of your tape library, you will need to call IBM directly using the number shown on screen. You will need to provide them with your control unit serial number and ask them for the license keys associated with this serial number. The serial number is located on the front of the control unit in the lower left hand corner. Please remember, you specifically want the control unit serial number, not the serial number of any expansions that you may have attached. Once you have verified that all license keys for the machine have been obtained, the system administrator will need to either save their configuration file if they are able to, or alternatively they can copy all of their unique configuration parameters from the existing control card via the web GUI before powering the machine down. These parameters can include, but are not limited to, network configuration, partitioning configuration, user access configuration, dedicated cleaning slots, etc. Until this process is complete, the library should not be powered down. If the control card is completely dead and the library cannot initialize, please make the system administrator aware that the library configuration will need to be redone from scratch once the replacement control card is in place. When you have the go-ahead from the system administrator to proceed with the replacement, the first step is to power down the library. Hit the power button once on the front of the library and allow the library to cycle itself down and power off. Once this is complete, move to the back of the library and flip the power supplies on the control unit to the off position. Now, you will need to label and remove any cables from the control card. In most cases, this will just be a single Ethernet cable going to the network management port on the control card. Once all cables are disconnected from the control card and out of your way, you are free to remove the control card from the machine. You will not need any tools for this procedure. The control card is held in machine by two wing latches. You will need to push these latches in slightly to unhook them from the clips that hold them. You can then open the latches. As you open them, it will start pushing the card out of the machine. Once they are fully open, the card will be far enough out of the machine to allow you to grab it carefully by the bezel and pull it straight back and out of the machine and set it to the side. You are now ready to insert the replacement control card. Line the replacement card up into the small rails in the control card channel where you just removed the faulty control card from. Push the card in approximately halfway until it is being held completely by the library. Open the wing clips on the replacement card and push the card in until the wing clips begin to engage the sides of the card channel. At this point you can push the wing clips closed and they will properly seat the card into the connector on the back plane of the library. Once the card is seated, reconnect all of the cables that you disconnected from the faulty control card making sure that they are all into the proper ports using the labeling that you did before removing the faulty control card. Flip the power supplies into the on position and move to the front of the library. Push the power button once to power the library on and allow it to initialize. The replacement control card should have been reset to factory defaults before you received it. So at this point you should be presented with the default setup wizard, which will guide you through setting up the library. Please set up the library according to the parameters that the system administrator took from the web GUI before the faulty control card was removed. It is important to note that not all of the parameters will be available to set up from the setup wizard, as it is for a basic setup only. Once the parameters have been set and you are presented with a login screen, the system administrator can log in to the web GUI and set up the rest of the parameters as they see fit. Please note, if the administrator has a saved configuration file that they want to restore from, you will only need to set up their network information in the setup wizard so that they can log in and restore from their backup configuration file. You must make sure that the library comes up clean without any errors. If there is an amber light below the operator panel after the library initializes, 
you will need to log in as an administrator and examine if they are related to the work that was just performed and clear them. If you have any questions in regards to examining and clearing operator interventions, please see the link in the description below for our video about 3576 operator interventions. If you are having any difficulties after this, please open up a support ticket through the Rocket Plus customer portal. Thanks for watching. This has been another video by the Top 10 USA video production team. We look forward to sharing more content with you going forward, so please check out our YouTube channel and please subscribe so that you get notified whenever we release a new piece of content.